Hey, this is Nisi of Nisi P Entertainment, and our next interview will be the lead characters in the upcoming film, Mad as Hell. We have the G-Man, the original G-Man of hip hop, and Mr. Robert Parham, who wrote, produced, and directed this film. We hope you enjoyed this, and don't forget to look for G-Man's video, Be Where You Are, on our Nisi P Entertainment YouTube page, our website, and our Facebook page. It's I'm going to hit this record button and say, this is Nisi P of Nisi P Entertainment, and I am here with the awesome Mr. G-Man and Mr. Robert Parham. How are you guys today? Doing great. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Thank okay. you. So you guys are in San Diego? No, we're out here in the Bay Area, closer to San Francisco. Oh. So you guys are working on a movie. Um, Mad as hell, as I remember. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> you guys are smiling, so this is a really good event here. So how, tell me, how do you guys meet? Well, kind of like, you know, a, a friend, I, I knew a friend, and uh, I, I'm a new single with Michael Jackson. I was interested in uh, starting to uh, promote it because I was getting ready to go and do the video and record it mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a month or so. And uh, he, t he mentioned uh, Rob to me, and, and had, had I known him, and I was kind of like, I've never met him before, heard him, but never met him. But then I reached out to him and we linked up. And that was about a year ago, maybe. Yeah. And ever since then, we've just been like, hey, we're going to do something. We're going to do something. He said, I got a script that's going to be perfect for you. And I was like, yeah, I'm ready to do it. Let's do it. And he, he was a man of his word. He contacted me back. I stayed in touch with him. And, and, uh, he, and then he wrote the script. And when I got the first part of the script and I read it, I was like, wow, this is awesome. It was so tight. And it was like, I had to come up with a voice for the character and I came up with the voice for the character and uh, when I when I called him and told him about it it was it was it was like it was, it was like magic it was, it was over wow so now G you have been doing rapping for a while right well I'm actually the man that named hip hop hip hop back in 1975 in 1973 me and my little crew started this little thing break dancing pop locking tick ticking rapping and rhyming but it wasn't a culture it wasn't it was nothing so in, in a, a year later, or a couple years later, we gave it a name hip hop because we were so popular everywhere we went doing our little dancing and rapping and rhyming and writing graffiti and all the stuff we did. And people were saying we were hip back in the day. They said we was hip back in the 70s. So okay. that's where the terminology hip comes from. And the terminology hop came from because we didn't have all the money. So we had to <laughs> hop over the turnstiles and get on the credit. But that's how basic, simple the word hip hop actually came into existence. For this, for this uh, genre, this era. Okay, so you're not, you don't consider yourself as being a rapper. You're more of a just a hip hop artist. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a MC and an entertainer. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm an artist. You know what I mean? I'm an entertainer. Rap is just a small aspect of the entire culture. When somebody calls you a rapper, they kind of insult you because they they water down who you should be, which is an entertainer. You know what I mean? You're an mm -hmm. entertainer. You know that's why you see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, hip hop artists, they great actors because they always in character. They, you know what I'm saying? So they yeah. tend to relate to scripts and stories because they tell them the story all the time. So I, 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 I kind of that the rap is just a small aspect. And to keep saying you a rapper, you a rapper, you start that means you don't know the whole culture. And my job being back in the game is to show you what this culture is about and teach you the main three principles that I that I that I that I, that I indoctrinated into the culture from the beginning which was knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, Mr. Parham, you, how do you, um, what part are you playing in this movie, Mad as Hell? I'm actually the lead. I play a, a character, his name is Michael is Azrael. Mm -hmm. uh, Azrael is the, um, in biblical terms, and Islamic terms, and Judaism terms, Azrael is the messenger of death, the angel of death. Exactly. <laughs> so I play this character who um, is a uh, one of the top sailors at his insurance company and comes mm -hmm. home to get ready for vacation with his wife and his daughter, comes home to find his wife and daughter have been killed. Oh. And they're killed because this guy <laughs> sends his goons to the wrong house. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, oh my I, I know they went to the wrong house. <laughs> they went to the wrong house. <laughs> and so the frustration of 
waiting for the police to solve the, mm -hmm. you know, the murder, et cetera, and so forth, leads me to take the law into my own hands. Wow. Okay, so other than being the lead in this movie, are you playing any other parts? Like, are you producing it? Did you write oh, it? Yeah. So I'm the writer, producer, director, um, and then I have my crew. I've got Amy Naylor. Uh, she's my production. I talked to manager. her. She's really nice. Amy is great. Amy, Amy did, did production managing on my last movie, Snow Black, which will be out in January. Okay. Um, we got um, my guy, Gary Turner. We got my DP. Um, there's Amy now. We got my DP, um, uh, Vert Wright. Uh, and what we bring in for, for the lighting, et cetera, so forth and sound. So, yeah, we've got a, a great crew, and, and I'm proud of what we do. So how did you come up with this idea for this movie? I've been kicking with it for a while. Last year, I went to uh, Memphis to shoot or to direct a movie with uh, Hawthorne James, mm -hmm. Shania Brown, and Cinder Williams. Okay. And, you know, we all became... Well, me and Shania have been friends. So me and Hawthorne and Cinda and I became really good friends and I wanted a vehicle to put Cinda in. And uh, I sat down and I was watching Death Wish one night. Okay. I was like, that's that's it. That's it. Okay. You know, we're gonna do an urban death <coughs> wish. So urban we're death take, wish. We're gonna take the movie Heat, we're gonna mm -hmm. take the movie Death Wish, and we're gonna take the movie Falling Down and put it in a blender add some uh, Nestle's quick to it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So how long has it, I mean, what's your process now? I mean, with COVID-19 and you guys kind of limited, so to speak, with getting around, how does yeah, how, that work around. now? So what I plan to do is we're going to do some of, uh, most of the interior shots first. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the stuff that we can do in, in the studio and uh, in, a, in a home. Okay. Um, do all of that, get that out of the way, and then as um, the quarantine is lifted, we'll do the exterior shots. Wow. So how how long have this is how long have you been doing this? I mean, as far as this particular movie, when did you start? We started writing this movie. I started writing this movie maybe a month ago. A month ago? Yeah. Wow. So is that, is that your normal? Is that your normal? Yeah, you? that's my normal thing. I've got, I've got like, I've got. He'll tell you, I got about twenty scripts sitting on my computer. Wow. I got twelve of them up here. <laughs> okay. Um, I've got three movies I'm editing right now, so it's always a creative process. You got to get that creativity out somehow. I, I just can't have it bottled up. So it's, it's a constant thing, constant. Okay, so G, is this your first time acting, or well, having to lead in a role? Well, well, actually, you know, I was a part of another group called Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock, and that led me to a guy by the name of Lionel Martin from mm -hmm. Classic Concerts Video Music Box back in the day. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So I was uh, always a part of videos, you know, doing a part a lot of videos, and then being a professional bodyguard trained, I, I came across a lot of celebrities and stuff that I've protected, not to mention that I've done shows with over the decades and over the years. So okay. I've, I've had little things, but as far as doing a feature film, I, this is my first one and I was so excited. And, and I think I got more excited when I came up with the voice for it because when I, when I thought, I was thinking about what would be attractive to the females if they when, when I'm talking. <laughs> so I can't just be on screen talking in my normal voice, although that's cool. But when I came up with the voice for the movie, I thought it'd be something special. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you 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 do voiceovers as well? Yeah, I do voices. I do Bernie Mac, Michael Jackson, Cat Williams. But you know, like when you like Bernie Mac, when like I'm trying to tell him right now, if you don't do something for me, I'm gonna do something too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You guys so, you know, look yeah. like you're an awesome team. That that's one. So <laughs> once you're done with this, since you've got all these scripts in your head and on your desk, what what's the next plan for you? Um, wherever God takes me, right. you know, wherever God takes me. Like I said, right now I'm editing a movie called Why Me, which is a fantastic movie about a bipolar disorder written by a 13 year old uh, 
at the time, she's 13, she's 14 now, Shania Brown. Okay. Uh, we got Snow Black that's coming out. I'm editing uh, a um, documentary on the Black Dragon, Ron Van Cleef. Okay. Um, I have another movie that I'm editing called Bullets, Blades, and Blood, starring uh, myself and one of India's biggest action stars, Babu Anthony, and China McCoy, who was in The Matrix. Okay. Um, I just finished a documentary on seven-time world kung fu champion Willie the Bam Johnson mm -hmm. uh, that we're just getting distribution for. Um, wow. Man, it's just so much. It's just so much. You wow. know, I just. So I, you you guys know I get I get tickets to your premiere, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gonna be on the <laughs> So so Rob, based on what I've a little read of your, on your social media, you did like. You were you're a martial arts guru, so to speak. So how did you go from doing martial arts to acting and writing and, and co-producing? How what what was that transition like? The transition was um, after I did all I could do or all I felt I could do in the martial arts that satisfied my soul. Mm -hmm. um, I looked at people in the in the business, and one of my uh, earliest mentors was the late Grandmaster Jim Kelly. So oh, I he love him. Tell me, yeah, he would tell me what to do if this is what you want to pursue, this is how you do it, da 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 da, -da. Mm -hmm. um, Upon his passing, I picked up a, another mentor, um, Art Camacho, who's a uh, action director. He's got uh, some fabulous movies out. And then Fred Williamson came into the picture. Okay. And, um, you know, I looked at guys like, you know, Jim Kelly, Chuck Norris, um, Bill Wallace, um, all of these people who were competing that transitioned into entertainment. You okay. Know, there's not a lot of us out there. I mean, you got, you had Jim Kelly, you got Billy Blanks, you got um, Carl Scott, you got Ron Van Cleef, <coughs> and, and, and Michael Jai White. That's about it. Just a handful. Just a know? handful. Just a so, handful. So for you to go into acting, what was that like? I mean, I see all of your mentors and, and some of them, some of the names just like are, are just awesome um, as far as I'm concerned versus them because I didn't follow them when they were really doing their martial arts and then going into acting. Some of them turned out to be some really great actors. So right. for you, how did, how did that help you just talking to them and, and being around them and listening to them? How did that help well, you with it as it, far as your acting? Uh, a lot of confidence. I've always acted. I've acted in my grammar school plays, my high school plays. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, in high school, I was the first African-American Romeo in Romeo and Juliet. In okay. the history of my high school. Okay. So I've, I've always had the ability to act, but um, I never had the, I never had a lot of confidence in my ability. Okay. So, you know, people like Jim Kelly, as I mentioned, Fred Williams, they mm -hmm. gave me the confidence. You know, I have to mention Ali D'Souza, he became my acting coach when I moved out here to uh, California. So they gave me the confidence to know that I can I can bring that emotion, I can bring that raw, uh, unfettered drama to the screen. So, wow. Uh, we did a movie with Fred Williamson called Jackson Bolt. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I got some uh, awards in the set. I think there are other people that were more deserving in that okay. movie than, than myself. Okay. But, I just looked at it a few days ago. Hey, I didn't do too bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, G, what's next for you? Do you have a new video coming out or a new song coming out? Yeah, I'm, I'm developing artists, teaching them the business and the industry, the difference between the two. You know, I created a 90 day curriculum to help these new artists for all based upon all the stuff that I've been through in, in my past so that they don't have to go through it. Uh, I got the new single that as I said I just released, Be Where You Are. It features the four bros, uh 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 Cap, he's a guy named Cap, he's out he's one of the uh, Houston's hottest uh, uh uh MCs out there. Uh I got uh uh P Rod Project Patrick Rodriguez, he helped me produce the, the remix to this song and the video. And then I got my guy King Ferris, who's one of the hottest uh up and coming artists from uh, out in uh, in Florida. So my, and, and then of course with me, they call me the icon of legend, but of course I say God is the icon of legend, you know? And so I'm, I'm and, and I took all of my, my gumbo that was in me, my mom who was West Indian, my, my dad who was from, from down South, 
me being born in New York and all of, all of my culturism that I had in me. And uh, I ended up getting an education based upon all of those experiences. So I, now I end up with my bachelor's in psychology, a cooking degree, culinary degree, if you will, my okay. doctorate in the theology of music. Plus, I'm a professionally trained bodyguard by the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines to be a coach quarter bodyguard, which I did for 28 years, you know, and and my, my management team, which is uh, the White Fortune nickname, a, a.k.a. Mr. Slack from uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, who just retired from the military and uh, was a captain in there and uh, who did the order of finance support the military. So, and I worked for his company, he had an entertainment company, and which which uh, he dealt with a whole lot of celebrities and, mm -hmm. and I ended up with, I was the bodyguard and getting on stage performance while doing that as well. Okay. So it's like, you know, so I, I meeting up with, with Rob to me, it was like a blessing because I keep God in everything. That's why G man stands for God's man. The G stands for God. The dash between the G and the M is for the bridge between God and man. And I, and I try to help facilitate that bridge and and close that gap. And, you know, always give my people a word, get them an experience, you know, uplift them, you know, cover them at shows. And linking them with, with Rob, who has a similar like-minded, like, like -minded, his work ethic is just, is like, it's impeccable, you know, and, and he stays consistent. One thing about our people, when we out here doing business, we don't stay consistent. We, right. we, we procrastinate, you know, and, and we don't stay focused. And the, the brother's drive, focus, and his energy, and, he, and, he, and it seems like he never say no. You know, when I say never say no, that's not a bad thing. That might be a good title for us. So that's a good title, never say no, you know. But, but and you know, but long story, well, before we even calling you for you say we out here doing things, we, we sitting here promoting. I got another song that I did, and we on the phone talking to people, trying to close deals. And, and we and I mean, every day, so I got here the night before last. And, uh, and we've been nonstop. It's like promoting, marketing. Getting interviews set up, talking to people, getting you know, mm -hmm. doing doing things, and and consistency, and and, and the, the most biggest thing that I, I like is keeping God in the mix. Let Him order right. our footsteps. Don't rush nothing. Let it let it be organic. Let it be natural. Let it grow okay. natural. You see what I mean? And mm -hmm. and then reaching out to people like yourself and talking to people and getting interviewed because you may know somebody that be like, you need to talk to these brothers, you need to you know, listen to this music. You may, hey, you might want to book them, book them at a show. You might, you know what I'm saying? So exactly. that, that camaraderie is so important because they understand that success is all about relationships. The first relationship totally is agree. between you and God. That's, that's the first thing. And then he'll bring people around you that is like-minded as long as you're doing what's right for yourself and for people and for him. That's yeah. awesome. Rob, I just thought of something while G-Man was talking. How do you go about um, picking and choosing your cast members? I mean, do you do they have a, have to have a particular feel that you know that this person would be perfect for that particular role, or they're just going to come in and audition for you and you pick them that way? Generally, I have a circle of actors that I, I like to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at some of the most successful relationships, like Pacino, De Niro, and Pesci, they all work together. Right. Uh, um, so I have a uh, uh, a circle of actors I, I work with and I write a role specifically for them. And then I have some quote unquote celebrity friends that I know I can write a role for them. You know, I can use them for a day or two. Okay. Um, and, and give them a role that would, uh, that's uh, fitting to them, fitting to their personality, fitting to their persona. And uh, that just role I, like I wrote for Cinda after I directed her in, um, in Why Me, uh, Cinda Williams can act. Let me tell you something. Okay. okay? okay. Let me tell you something. She doesn't win any awards off of Wyoming and there's something wrong. She can act. So I said, um, I'm going to write sort of something very challenging, very challenging, something that's totally out of her character. Okay. You know, so, and she's all for it. She loves it. So um, that's how I, that's how I operate up here. You know, if I was to take everything out, it would just be a mess all over the place. So I, I can keep it up here. <laughs> And just write little notes here and there and here and there. So, so you said you wrote this specifically for Cinda, and, yeah. and you you had something for her totally out of her element. So right. how do how do you? Okay, I guess my question is: if you wrote this for out of her element, how did you know that she was going to be perfect for that particular 
area because it's out of her element. You know, some people get characterized and stuck in one particular right, in one particular yeah, role. Yeah. And if you look yeah. at Cinder's career, you know, mm -hmm. she's usually the seductress, you know, okay. the femme fatale. Okay. So but I look at I want a strong black woman who's got some personal issues. Okay. This is very professional, but you know, she's got a grudge against people in general. Okay. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it, I know she can do it because I seen her act. You know, All we right. were on set and I was directing her and she brought me to tears on set. You know, okay. I'm, I'm, and I know it was gonna happen because I'm directing the movie and she still brought me to tears. So okay. I know she can act. I know she can act. Okay. There's no doubt in my mind that she will absolutely kill this role. No. Well, I'm, I'm going to have to see if we can get Cinda on, on camera here so I can talk to her. Well, you guys, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to talk to you both. I, I do want to continue this. And I know that you guys are running around doing all kinds of stuff with the movie and everything. So um, I would like to ask you guys to come back and, and we can sit down and work out a time for you guys to come back and talk to me some more. Certainly can. So thank you so much. So this has been BCP of NCP Entertainment here with Mr. G-Man and Mr. Robert Parham. Thanks. And, for the, and the name is the original G-Man of hip hop. So they, they know where to go get, look it up. The original <laughs> G-Man of hip hop. Well, we are definitely going to make a note of that only because if you, you I want you guys to go to NCPEntertainment.com. I'm, I'm kind of revamping the site, but also on my Facebook page because your video is going to be up there before the weekend is out. So everybody gets uh, to see this. So <laughs> we're all good with that. Yay. So thank you again, you guys, and have a great afternoon and stay safe out there. Definitely. Thank you. you all right. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.